Okay, I have a big package here that arrived. This is for another speaker. This is the Vizio M-Series 5.1.2. Now you're gonna be wondering, why is there three? Usually it's five speakers, then point one is the subwoofer, and then there's another point two in there. That is the Dolby Atmos, which means there are two uh, upward speakers that's gonna bounce off the ceiling and go back at you for the Dolby Atmos experience. But is it actually worth it? We're gonna be finding out. Here we go. All right, let's open this bad boy up. This is pretty uh, big, especially for a sound bar and stuff, but uh, let's do it. There's a bit of an effort here, by the way. <laughs> so we got the, uh, I assume these are all the uh, cable accessories and all that. So let me get my cutter. Okay, so what do we have here? Just so you know, I don't have my overhead camera at the moment. So we are, I'm just gonna show it to you. That's right here. We're gonna check each one of them. First off, what do we have here? This is the uh, SPDIF or SPDIF uh, cable. It's the optical cable right here. Now we got the remote right here with the, uh, there's two AAA batteries that goes with it. So it's right here. This is how it looks like. And then there's two batteries here. We have a, I'm assuming it's the HDMI. Yep, it, it is the HDMI cable right here. We have the instructions manual right here for that. We're gonna be using this later on how to set this up. I wanna see all the cables that come with it first. So we have the RCA cables. This is always, you know, this is like a staple at this point. Now we also have the 3.5 uh, millimeter audio cable right here in case you need it. What else do we have? We have the satellite L cable. On one end, there is a uh, an L-shaped cable and then the other is uh, the uh, standard straight cable right here, just so you guys can see. This is pretty long, by the way, so that, that is really, really good. I assume this is gonna be for the rare speakers and stuff. Well, it does say satellite cable out, but you know, we'll see. And so they are two. So I am really assuming this is gonna be for the surround speakers or the rare speakers. We have the power cable right here. It does say here, power cable for subwoofer. Okay, so this is the uh, power cable for the subwoofer. Down. Now, I would assume this is the power cable for the soundbar. Yep, it is the power cable for the soundbar. Uh, by the way, both of the power cables have uh, the two prongs right here. It's not the, uh, the three prong or any other uh, shape. What are these? It says wall mount bracket. Okay, so these are the wall mount bracket and the screw. Two wall mount brackets. Okay, more wall mount brackets right here. This is gonna be the base, I guess. Okay, so that's about it. I believe this is the Subwoofer. We have a quick setup guide right here just to auto focus it. And then at the back, FAQ. Let's see how big these two rare speakers. This is one of them. I want to try to be delicate as possible because, you know, just in case. Okay. So the rare speakers are um, actually small. Well, I guess you don't really need a big one. This is how big it is. Look, it's pretty small. Which is good actually, because it's a space saver, if you get what I mean. And here's the second one. There's obviously, obviously there are, there's gonna be two of them, left and right. Okay, this is a little heavy. Uh, this is the subwoofer. Better be the subwoofer, this is uh, a little heavy. Yep, 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 yep. It is the subwoofer. And this uh, the subwoofer uh, speakers is actually downwards, which is actually good. You know, you, you're not directly, or the bass is not directly hitting you. Uh, so I like that, because you know, it's gonna crawl to the floor and all that. What is, does the back look like? Here you go. Uh, it has the ACN, surround two surround inputs right here, and the on and off uh, switch or button. And it has the, uh, the that big hole right there and the big subwoofer speaker, which is uh, pointing downwards. I like the fact that the front is pretty clean. You don't see nothing, it's just like a black slab. <laughs> and the top as well. The top is pretty, pretty clean. Okay. Okay, this is quite long, but uh, we wanna focus on this one right here. These are the controls in the middle. I'm not sure if you guys can see. So power, I'm assuming back, and then Bluetooth, minus and plus. And then it has the DTS-X logo, Dolby Atmos logo, which is the most important one. This is 
this is the, uh, the uh, one of the reasons why I uh, chose this one because most of the Adobe Atmos speakers are pretty expensive. It can go over a thousand dollars. So it has two mounting uh, brackets right here. Let's look at the inputs. Okay, connect voice assistant via aux. The peel here, so we need to peel. So time for the peel. Okay, awesome. So it has the uh, Vizio. This is, it has the AC input right here. I'm not sure if you guys can see. I'm gonna try to probably make a uh, B-roll for this. But it has AC input, uh, aux VA, and the aux, two aux uh, inputs right here for the three millimeter, uh, 3.5 millimeter audio jack. The other side, it has the HDMI arc, this side, and they'll also gotta peel it. Okay, so peel here. Okay, here are the inputs. So it has HDMI in, HDMI out with the eARC uh, sign right here. So that's the two TV and then optical on the other side and then USB uh, input on the other side. Okay, we are going to be <laughs> setting this up. trying to connect the speaker right now. Here we go. I'm not sure if you guys can see. It says HDMI 2 speaker is connected. Do you want to? Yes, we're gonna select that. So Simplink is now on. I'm gonna need, where is the Vizio uh, remote control? That's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to search the input. All right, let's try to open probably YouTube and stuff. Uh, I don't want no copyright, so I'm gonna have to cut anything that is copyrighted dolby atmos test so as you can see i'm not sure if you guys can see but on the proper left side there is a uh, volume bar on the left hand side of the uh, the sound bar so we're going to try to test a dolby atmos test HMI right here arc. this one okay hopefully this works alexa all lights off So, the uh, the sound definitely sounds way better than just my uh, TV, and I really like it. I've been testing it for like uh, about an hour now. I've been testing a few movies. Unfortunately, I can't uh, show it to you guys because of uh, copyright laws and stuff. I definitely noticed a very significant upgrade from just the uh, TV speakers. That is really, really good. However, I've been watching, uh, you know, a, a few movies with Dolby Atmos and played a few uh, music with Dolby Atmos on my phone. I noticed I can't hear the Dolby Atmos as much. I mean, it is there, you know, I could experience that. I've definitely, it's, you know, definitely, uh, there's Dolby Atmos compared to just like regular 5.1 speakers. But I guess, I guess, well, first of all, both my rare speakers are just on the uh, my couch right now. Uh, I will be mounting it later, but for now, you know, for just setting it up and uh, trying to experience the whole uh, 5.1.2 soundbar. But I noticed that it's not as much as I have expected, especially with the music, because, you know, I am wearing, I've been wearing, you know, AirPods Pro, and so I know how Dolby Atmos, at least it's not the full, you know, I understand the compression and all that with the Bluetooth and AirPods Pro, but you can definitely experience or feel that, oh, okay, it's from the rear right or it's from behind or uh, rear left or some or up, at least with the AirPods Pro. The, the, you know, Apple has done a very good job at tricking your brain on where the, uh, the audio is coming from or the, especially the vocals. I've tried it with the uh, sound bar Definitely you can hear the Dolby Atmos is different from the regular uh, music, but is not much of an experience compared to the uh, the AirPods Pro that I have. I can hear that it's different from the music. I mean, the regular music, 5.1, but most of the uh, audio or the vocals from the music, it's mostly coming from the, uh, the front sandbar, so I can definitely, that one I can compare. With the movies, they look, uh, they sound really, really awesome. Again, I don't have a very good uh, comparison with how Dolby Atmos will sound like, uh, like a true Dolby Atmos surround will sound like. Maybe other than like watching on IMAX, 
but I digress. But overall, I love this one, especially for the price range. This is under $500. Most of the Dolby Atmos speakers, well, I guess the high-end ones are like a thousand even more. So this one, I think this is good, although my experience is limited, but I think it's really, really good for the price. The sub subwoofer bass is really good, although I didn't really max it out because, you know, I live in New York City. I don't want my neighbors to be, you know, knocking on my door and all that. But definitely really, really good, good experience, especially with the price. Oh, and almost forget, there's no cable between the main sound bar and the subwoofer. So that is really, really good. They are connected or they're paired wirelessly. So you can just like put the subwoofer, tuck it in, be like I'm putting it like on uh, the side of my couch where nobody can see. And then the rear speakers, they're connected through the subwoofer. So you don't have any cables dangling through across your living room towards the, uh, the sound bar. Really, really appreciate it. All right, that's it. That's it for this video, guys. Don't forget to smash the like button. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing to the channel. Also comment down below if, uh, what do you think of this, if you already have it. But I'm Lars of Kilobit Nomad. See you in the next video.